hey, you could be doing better with your art business. You could be getting more clients. You could be getting more money. And I'm gonna show you how to do it all. Welcome to the Art Mentor. My name is Sean, and thanks to these three artists that submitted their art commissions for my help and advice, you're gonna get insane value out of today's video. So make sure you watch this whole thing all the way through to learn how to level up every single one of your practices and check this out. All right, first artist up today is Jazzy Blue Neko. Definitely give them a like and follow on their social media. I know that they'll appreciate it. Jazzy Blue tells me that they enjoy doing semi-realism art commissions, mostly character illustrations. They've been taking commissions for about a year and three months at this point, and they've gotten roughly 33. That's really good. So generally, they get about two or three commissions per month. That's that's great. Good job. I also see that your marketing strategy is on point, y'all. You got to take notes on this one. You got to start looking for more than one platform like Jazzy Blue Neko here, who's getting a Across three different platforms good for you that's smart pricing's real solid too you got about 50 to 300 euros that's solid too now jazzy blue isn't perfect though and they tell me that they're having a rough time figuring out exactly what niche they want to get into and also they're having a hard time finding new clients so let's take a look at your artwork and let's figure out some things that you might want to tweak to help redirect those clients right back to you like this so jazzy blue as I look across all of your artworks they're phenomenal they're really really nice especially this lovely Aquatic horse painting. Is this a seahorse? Can we call it that? But there's one major flaw. I want to highlight it right here. I know that you took a buttload of time to actually paint and all this stuff, but I'm just going to tell you, if you're going to do character art, you have to focus it on the character. So in this image of this dog, you can easily crop it, boom, right here. And that's what's going to allow you to actually see that. That's going to satisfy the client a lot more than just seeing this massive field of flowers and mountains. Let me show you on this one. If I take a look at this artwork right here, it is 75% background. Y'all that want to do characters, you have to focus it on the character. Anything extraneous, you need to get rid of it and dump it because the client isn't going to appreciate it and it detracts from the overall foci of the image, which always should be the characters. Now they're large and in charge, and that would make my client extremely happy. And so would you, especially from a thumbnail image, you can zoom out like this and you can see it just makes a big difference, doesn't it? I noticed that you could definitely use a little bit of advice on your color theory. Let's check this out. So in this lovely image of this beast in this red wall, Water here it's just too hot and one of the things I want to advise y'all on is that you got to balance your warm and cool colors better so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna introduce more cool colors in this I'm gonna introduce more blues I'm gonna introduce a little bit more greens into that I'm also gonna adjust the value structure on this one too because as things come forward to us they should get darker to us so by just adjusting stuff that's going on in that background introducing some more blues it's gonna mute it and therefore it's gonna bring our actual focus onto that character I'm also gonna do a few other little touch-ups just to again highlight the character because again, if you're doing character illustrations, the character is king. Y'all gotta get this so that you attract clients because if they don't see the character right away in the first like two seconds, they're gonna click off of you and they're gonna scroll past you. You don't want that, right? Y'all see that big difference right there? It's not a lot, but it's just a little tweak in order to really punch it up and grab that client's attention. Now, Jazzy Blue Neko, I got some big advice for you on this one, all right? So hear me out on this. When you're talking about you're not sure what niche you wanna get into, I have three that I can recommend for you right off the bat. First off, I think that you need to embrace the fact that you love the paint landscape. There's a big void and a lot of clients that don't get this fulfilled. So check that out. Another one you might want to get into is Pokemon. Like there's a lot of people that really love Pokemon. They have OC Pokemon. Uh, if you can do people too, as well as you can do animals, then you could probably do Pokemon and trainers. That's a really great underserved niche as well. And then lastly, yeah, um, I don't typically recommend this, but you could definitely get into the furry scene if that's something that you want to do. But if not, it's okay too. But here's my perpetual advice, y'all. Pick one niche, conquer it, and then expand. Don't try and serve yourself three different ways because it's just going to end up with clients passing you by. Thanks so much for submitting your art, Jazzy Blue Neko. I hope this helped you out. Let me know about it. If you got something good out of this video right now so far, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button for more content just like this so that more artists just like you can benefit from it. And hey, if you really want to benefit and really take your art to the next level and you're ready for that, let me tell you about my art mentorship program. So this is my one-on-one -on -one coaching system. It's not a course. It's not a class. It's not generic content. This is me and you working one-on-one -on -one to meet your goals, to get into your career, to get the attention of the art directors that you want to get. So what you get out of this is a unique tailored program that's going to solely focus on what you need to do to bring your art to the next level. So if you want to be my client and you want to learn more about my art mentorship program, check out the link down below, fill out that Google form, and I'll reach out to you soon. Now let's move on to the next one.
Check this out. Next, we're gonna switch over to Steffi TZ, long time watcher of my channel. Thank you so much for that support. I'm giving you some love back right now. For Steffi Styles, she says that she likes to do cartoon and semi-realism, maybe including backgrounds of product drawing, and her genre is fantasy furry kid entertainment and maybe related with editorial commercial work. Steffi, you got more options than the Chinese super buffet. We gotta talk about that. Now, regardless of all that though, Steffi's actually knocked it out and done a good amount of commercial commissions for about a year and a half. They've gotten more than 10 commercial commissions. You get about one to two per month. Now, Steffi's artwork ranges from basically $250 to $300, which sounds great, but I'm gonna come at you with why you need to get more for that. And now Steffi asked me for help because she feels that she needs help finding her self brand and her identity and coupling that with some discipline practices in order to really punch up her pricing. Well, Steffi and everybody watching, let's go. I'm gonna show you all this. Steffi, the first thing I wanna point out is that as I look across the artworks that you submitted for me, I'm not really sure what your brand is. And that is something that I think all artists need to consider at some point is, what's my brand? What is, what's unique about the way I do things, right? But here's what I see across yours. I see a dark fantasy artwork. I see an artwork that could be used maybe for an avatar, maybe for like a VTuber. And then I also see kind of a more editorial children's illustration look about it. This is a little bit confusing because from a client's perspective, they're not really sure consistently what they're gonna get. And that is a really tight thing I wanna lock you in on. I wanna give you some things that you can consistently do across your artwork. So y'all check out these tips. So first artwork of yours I wanna check out is this one. It's a real big dark fantasy piece. And my issue with this is that there's just not a clear focus of this because everything is just so hot and so bright orange and bright red that every place is fighting for my attention. It's like getting punched in the face a hundred times. You just don't know where it's coming from. So if everybody watching this, make sure this is how you fix this issue. One thing that you wanna do is you always wanna implement cool colors with hot colors like this. So easy way I'm gonna do this is for that background, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put a great map over the background on it and I'm gonna implement a little bit more hot colors on that, hot colors being somewhere in the yellow to red and orange area, also some green sometimes too. So I wanna go ahead and do that first across my background areas and I'm gonna do a couple quick little touch ups with it too. Now for contrast, what you'd want to do for your foreground and for your main character in this type of a scene where she's in a very hot background is I want to implement more cool colors. So I'm going to implement more blues and purples into her character. Again, I'm going to be doing this in Photoshop via gradient map. Every program has some function, some version of this thing with it too. But that way it's going to create a lot more focus and emphasis. It's going to create areas for our eye to focus in on and rest. Now for my last step here, I'm gonna do a few more touch-ups because I really wanna punch up this color play of warm colors versus cool colors and definitely adjust a little bit of your value structure here just to make sure that this character stands out because she should be the focal point. So check this out, that wasn't a lot I just did there and it honestly didn't even take me that much time, but it creates so much more focus and emphasis, doesn't it? Now, Steffi, if you want my advice for what you should do and what's gonna get you the most money, here's what I think about this. First off, is when I take a look at this image right here, this is very Day of the Dead Spanish inspired. I flippin' love this. This is so beautiful. You need to do more stuff like this. This is so unique. And when you talk about a brand, you definitely have it right here. These other images, okay, cool. But this one, mm, this is fire, y'all. So, Steffi, here's what I recommend for you, my friend. You need to get into children's book illustrations. You need to get more into the editorial cartoon side. And why? Check this out. Because you should be charging upwards of about $1,000. No, I did not stutter up on that. Because here's the thing y'all need to know. If you're going to do commercial work, your client is not only paying for your labor. They are also paying in perpetuity for the rights to that image. So that demands mm, bigger price points. So y'all, that's how you handle yourself as a commercial artist so that you get big bucks and you get big opportunities. Thanks so much, Steffi. Hope y'all learned something big from that too. All right, y'all, our next artist is Amadika. Definitely give them a like and follow on their social media. I know that they'll appreciate it. And uh, what? All right, y'all, who let the furry in here? I'm just playing, I love you too. Am I like the only art YouTuber that caters to these people? So Amadika has been checking out our commissions on three different platforms. Great marketing strategy there. They like to do something between anime and semi-realism with a little bit more realism. And their genre is anything that lets them draw animals. Well, I got some big advice for you on that, my friend. Keep tuned here. And they are completely green to commissions. They've never got any. For the pricing, they got a pretty good start to this, which is they want to charge somewhere between $40 and $200. When I ask Amadika, 
What's your biggest struggle? They tell me that it is mostly that they struggle with complex backgrounds and sometimes the characters just don't fit in. So I hope you're hungry because I'm gonna serve you up loads of great value today to help you out to get started. So let's take a look at this image first. So first off, you have two really cute characters and you can see them in a few different ways. However though, for the purpose of attracting clients, I would very much recommend that you actually split this up. Like instead of just cramming all of these onto one page, which yes, does fill space very nicely, you should split this up into three different illustrations. Like imagine this from a client perspective, they can see that you did one illustration or they can see that you've done three. Which one do you think that they're gonna like better? Go for three, baby, that's what's up. Now let's talk about this Dragonborn Bard. This is a great image, by the way, and I really like it. And I think a lot of clients would like to commission you to do stuff like this too. However, though, I see what you're talking about with, it doesn't feel like it's part of its background. And the number one thing that you need to do here is first off, you need to make sure that it's not just local colors everywhere, which means that basically I can understand what color his skin is. I can understand what color his shirt is, but there's no integrated sense of what is happening like the sky the color of the sky should reflect down to the character the green from the grass should also reflect up onto the character so here are some things that you want to do the first thing I want to do is I definitely want to lower the values and do a little adjustments with that because anything that's in the background should be a little bit lighter than the character that way the contrast is going to force us to look at the character first see that so now that we got that figure out, let's jump into color because it's the major thing that a lot of people don't do. Now, one major thing that you wanna do is you can't just use local color and you're gonna see me making some adjustments right here. I'm gonna use some gradient maps and I'm gonna paint into this a little bit more because you need to show how the environment is affecting everything. Like for example, if there's a blue sky, you need to show how that blue is gonna pollute the colors, the native colors of your character, of what they're wearing, of what they're holding like this. Same thing too with the trees in the background. We need to show that if there's a particular time of day like if it's sunset you want those colors to also in fact the rest of the scene with it too this is how you make things look integral rather than it just being a whole bunch of weird static paste images and it looks more like a collage than an illustration have you ever struggled with it like that before just doing these little tweaks and these touches is going to make a big huge difference now i personally like to do this a lot with the gradient map and you can do this with more than one of them too so check this out amadika this is how you can better integrate all of your characters with your background and scenes you gotta make sure that you don't just stick to local colors. You have to think about everything around it and how you can integrate it. See that? Now I'm a Dika. I'm gonna read your mind right now. Mm, yep, and I'm gonna tell you what I think you need to do. Cause I see you starting to bust into it, but I'm gonna make it known. You need to bust into fantasy and D&D &D because it's gonna have everything that you love to do. First off, you can definitely jump into either fantasy or dark fantasy creature design. I feel like that would totally be right up your alley, right? Second is I would also recommend that you maybe think about going into some fantasy and D&D characters because there's lots of non-human characters i'm going to say that that's a pretty underserved niche those are really great and i'm going to tell you that those clients they generally have some good money to drop on it too so i hope that was really helpful for you and if you make those tweaks you're going to succeed big time all this is just a start of some really fantastic advice for you to really level up your illustrations and your artwork and if you want to see more we've got a whole video on it right here for you to get some god level tips on how to level up your illustrations go check it out